Hi, my name is Shannon Singleton, and this is my cousin Carly, and this is Conversation with Cousin Carly, episode six. Beware of the good people in your life. Cousin? Hi, thank you for having me, Shana. I'm Carly Rock. I'm a writer, I'm a coach, I'm the CEO of Merch by Carly Rock. Beware of the good people in your life. Um, you probably like, where is she going with this? Yeah, I'm like, beware, what happened? <laughs> Usually when, okay, so when we're on our spiritual journey, right, we go through this, okay, I have to cut this person out off if I want to grow from this. I got to cut this person off if I want to learn how to do this or, you know, just mm-hmm. you learn who you need to cut off in your life. The toxic people, the toxic places and the toxic things, but no mm-hmm. one ever talks about the good people in your life. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the good people in your life can be toxic too your friends who have no visions for themselves, dreams for themselves, motivation for themselves, nothing. They're just Mm -hmm. stuck and content. Those people, but they're still good to you. They're still a good friend in your life. Those can be. Those can stop you from growing. Mm -hmm. Um, You are who you hang out with. And they always say, if everything's going on, wrong, everything's going wrong in your life, you got to check the three people closest to you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you're like, well, there are the three people closest to me. I love them. I can never, you know, push them away or reorganize them. But if you want to grow, if you want to do something different, if you're trying to get uncomfortable, if you're trying to get to the next level and phase in your life, it's necessary to maybe rearrange those people, but it's hard to see that if you're not looking at the good people in your life as well. Right. So that's where this topic came from. <laughs> <laughs> I've um, I've been there. Um, I've been there through different phases, whether it was me improving in like my education um, and switching schools from all the people I knew. Um, that played a part in the dedication that people had, my peers had in school at the time. I was about to get a scholarship um, where my grades were going to count for everything. They were gonna make or break whether I keep the bursaries and scholarships or not. So when my friends would be going out during the weekend, like my high school life, my high school experience is different when I talk about it compared to everybody else. They talk about the parties they might've went to, the, di- the dating, um, how they got introduced into dating, um, different experiences. Yeah, I had my little wild moments, but my high school was really like on some buckle down stuff. And around that time, I barely, like I had one or two friends, mm-hmm. but n- nobody who studied how I did, no one who was learning at the rate that I was learning, especially coming from a public elementary school to being just brought into a private school where people were already taught a certain way of studying before they even got into seventh grade, where I'm learning all of this for the first time. I'm learning discipline that was never necessarily required in my household. Um, My parents were go-getters, hustlers, and entrepreneurs of sorts. And so it wasn't on some, we get up every day at this time and do this. No, my parents, my mom would be sometimes be called on an acting set and she'd have a, she'd have that role for like a, three months and then it wouldn't be a role you know what I mean or different things like that that I experienced so the discipline of getting up every day and doing certain things and creating study habits and having tabs in my books and highlighters that wasn't for me um and so I remember that was my first inclination that you'd have to drop some people um but my mom made me very aware of that she was like the friends that you people probably the ones that are uh that you meet in like university those are the ones that you'll probably end up meeting. I'm sticking to after you get around that certain age. But then in my personal and spiritual growth, that was harder for me to kind of let go sometimes. Um, Because I developed a sense of understanding for a bunch of stuff that like, even in our regular, regular lives and everyday lives, we'd be like, no, that's not good you know, without having any type of awareness or anything. It's like, nah, that's not really who I want to around. But then when I start studying human relations, um, 
it taught me to be more understanding and get to the bottom of things of who the people actually are and not what their actions are. And so I'm like, oh, she's a human, like I'm a human and this is my friend. And that's, you know what I mean? And not recognizing you're not going, you're anywhere. Um, you're not, you're not moving forward with this friend. You guys are not doing anything new. Yeah. And when you're trying to go on new paths, when it's time to see these friends, you're going back to the places that you were already left. So why is it that you you can be here? They're not coming to meet you where they're at, but anytime you need to see them, you got to go into the places and spaces and conversations that y'all are used to. Um, and that's when I had to slowly realize. Um, and I think the, I might be rambling a little bit, but um, the thing about me is I've always tried to be a leader mm -hmm. um, and never necessarily worry about who's helping me build myself up. Because I'm like, there's school for that. There's teachers for that. There's counselors for that. So I never look to that for my friends until I realized that Carly, once you get out of the school setting, there's no more teachers, counselors and stuff that are just readily available to you. It's now your friend group that can kind of helps build you up. And because that was never a requirement from, requirement for me, I didn't have a lot of requirements for my friends. Like, it was like, do you, don't lie to me and don't like have all these dudes up in my house. You know, like it was real simple, real simple stuff. I didn't, I didn't expect much, but then I start hearing different quotes. But since I was little, my grandmother used to say like, um, show me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. She mm -hmm. always said that and birds of a feather flock together. That was two things she always said to the point where I was like, oh my God. But at the end, I was like, listen, if they want to be a chicken head, they could be a chicken head. I'm not, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, whatever. But then um, I start hearing different quotes that were like, um, you'll become most like the, the three of three closest people around you, like you said, or if you have five, whatever around you, you're bound to be the sixth. And when I start hearing stuff like that, because I work, my brain just automatically pays attention to statistics. Yeah. And now those type of things hit me in a different way where I was like, that's true. Because if I have three rotten lemons in a bowl and I put a fresh one on top, the mold is gonna start to feed on that fresh one faster than it would have if it was alone. Yeah. Or faster than it would have if it was a bunch of fresh ones that all start rotting slowly over time with each other and when I got that in my mind I said that's when I had to recognize the friendships I had the ones that I would neglect because they pushed me too far yeah. they were doing things where they were questioning like my progress and things and I'm like damn why are you questioning because they 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 understood they understood that to have me as a friend they were going to try to help me progress yeah otherwise we weren't going to stay friends you know what I mean? Or I wouldn't be the friend they'd be able to see every weekend because I wasn't moving how they were moving. Mm -hmm. And then I'd have, I, I had to start recognizing um, you're going to have to drop some of these people, not only friends, um, sometimes closeness and family relationships, yeah. not thinking that these people have to be in your space all the time or um, learning that I had to put things in context. The whole everything's not for everybody is really real. Um, I feel like I just gave you a mouthful. I'm gonna take a sip of tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny, cause I mean, I wrote, I, I wrote a few notes. Um, let me put birds of a feather here to talk about that afterwards. But I found myself in my journey, um, reaching new heights and finding new tribes and finding new people and finding people who love me in a way that I show up for myself now, because that's what I'm attracting. Mm -hmm. And then looking at my old friends differently. And seeing how they differ. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of looking at what I surround myself with in a phase where I didn't, when I lacked self-love. Like mm -hmm. my journey either made my friendships tighter or really put a strain on my friendship mm -hmm. because there was this one friend that I had a falling out with and we simply had a falling out because I realized that the love that she gave was some a love that I tolerated for years. Mm -hmm. And now that I was getting this newfound love, her love wasn't enough or it for me. Right. 
And it was hard for me because I I also found myself blaming her or, you know, in my head kind of like, well, you don't and being mad at her for it instead of accepting it. Right. Like Like it just is. This is it just is. Been, you know what I'm saying? And now that you're here with it, you don't want to deal with it anymore. You don't want to tolerate it or you don't want it in your life anymore. And that's okay. But that's the uncomfortable. That's the growth. That's the separation. That's the work that people don't talk about. People think, oh, I'm just, I'm, my eye is open. I'm on a spiritual journey. It's all going to be peace, love, and flowers. No, it's not. It's the it's separation. A lot of uncomfortable truths. Yeah, it's the separation from people that you think are good in your life or people who are good in your life. It's the realization that, damn, maybe my little tribe that I've built for myself is not the healthiest mm-hmm. um, tribe I could have built for myself. Um, it's all of those things that make the process uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So, birds of a feather. I've heard that that same line my whole entire life as well and um, Mm -hmm. it always I remembered my young teenage self well um I hang out with a few hoes that don't make me a hoe what you mean right listen locked together but now that I'm grown and I go back to it it doesn't really mean okay just because she's a hoe you a hoe it could be y'all all have unhealthy eating habits you know what I'm saying? And when you go out, y'all eat the same foods together. And this is the person, people that you you know, you're eating all, all, the, all these unhealthy foods with, and yet you're trying to go the healthy way in life. So that can be a toxic relationship. Exactly. Stuff as small as that. These are the people that you always go into the club with getting drunk with. And now that you don't want to get drunk anymore you don't want to go to the club anymore you find a strain in the relationship (laughs) down to all your friends got mommy issues you never sat down with yourself and analyzed your mommy issues and all your girlfriend's mommy issues but Mm -hmm. now that you're on this journey and you're realizing birds of a feather flock together probably trauma bonded yeah you looking at your friends and you looking at the people you surround yourself with and the conversations that you're having and places that you're going, you're like, damn, we were all friends because we all- And you start to realize, right? You (laughs) you start to realize what the commonalities are and what are the things that keep you close. Yeah. That's really big. Um, I do want to speak to that just a little bit though, because I hate, I hate having to separate from people. Um, and that understanding part of me hasn't died. Um, and so I'm still, I still waver in terms of like how compassionate I am versus where I need to just draw the line. Um, but for me, that's where I think like my, my coaching stuff bleeds into my personal life where I will try to feed my friends, um, with new things, new concepts, new ideas, um, new thought patterns. I'll really try to bring that into our conversations. Like, okay, yes, we're having a drink tonight and we plan on talking. But now when it's my turn to talk, I'm bring the Carly thing on it. I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, speak from where I'm at now. I'm gonna speak from where I'm trying to get to. So I will entertain your conversation. Um, and I will, I will still invest in this relationship, but I'm gonna first bring forth the different things that I'm trying to do in my life, the different perspectives, because um, like, like you, like we were discussing before is I want my friends to grow with me. I want to grow with my friends. So when they're doing new things, that's out of the box for what we're normally doing, bring it back into the circle. Yeah. Bring it back into the circle. Cause I'm going to bring everything that I'm learning back into the circle too, because my ultimate goal is to, and I know it might not be possible, but I want to end up like my core group of friends. I want to, 10 years down the line, I would love to still be friends with them. I'd mm-hmm. still love to be in their life. I'd still love to see how we progressed and how we went from here to there to there. Um, and I understand it's not all going to be at the same speed. But for me, I feel like some of those people are worthwhile, especially the people who um, I know actually are trying to grow, even in small ways. Um, those are the ones I want to keep around because it's easy to 
to not easy, but I think as you progress, it, it's easy to find new people um, that are great. You know what I mean? Or that are where you want to be. Um, but something about me needs people to know me at different stages. Yeah. Something about me, maybe there's still a part of me that needs to get past that, but it'll be fulfilling for me to know like the people who I, who I came up with, I can still grow. I can still be around. Um, not even trying to force the issue, um, but I did want to bring up one other thing is in my age now, mm -hmm. um, it's easier, number one, for me to cut off when I need to. It's harder for me to cut off when I need to, but it's it, the distinction that I have when, versus when I was different is I used to be more influenced mm -hmm. um, because I was the one who was late in a lot of things in terms of socially. Okay. Education-wise, I felt like I was ahead and intellect-wise, I was, I was ahead. Um, but when it came to working out social things, I felt like I was always behind. And when you were bringing up good friends, that's where it rec I recognized it, is you could have great friends who are there for you, who you can confide in everything, but based on what they know is what they'll teach you. Especially if you're looking for your friends to be teachers for you in certain aspects. And that's where I received some miseducation for my good friends. You know what I mean? They didn't teach me the best possible way to get do certain things, but because they were the people I was around and because they were good with all these other aspects, I missed, I automatically took their advice as good too. And that's the part that I think could be dangerous for some people who don't recognize it is that, like you said, you could be good in all these other things, but the small stuff that you're being fed based off where their perce perception is from, might have you in situations that you think it's like, well, come on now, my friend there who's a good person engages in that, yeah, and that doesn't make me see her any less in her in my eyes. I can do the same thing, but then you end up realizing, nah, this is not the this is not the feel, and then you find out years later, like I didn't want to be in that space, girl. I was just telling you what I knew, like I didn't yeah. want to do that, like girl. It's like the good friend that you know is gonna fight for you. Like if he, she had to pull up, she gonna pull up. She whip a whip somebody ass over. Right. It seemed like that's a good friend, but it's not. Right. That's toxic. That's toxic you know, too. And you causing you putting more fuel to the fire at this point. You're putting yourself in a situation where you might get in trouble. You know, um, it might seem like a good friend because they showed up, but. The friend that's healthy for you is the friend that's going to try to calm you down, talk you out of going to jail, talk you out of your negative thoughts, feed you with affirmations and remind you why you shouldn't go down that path or down that route. Mm -hmm. That's when the difference comes in play and you growth. when you, I'm at this point that if I lose a friend, I'm gaining a mentor. Like at, I'm at mm -hmm. this point in my life that I don't want no new friends. I want all mentors that become mm -hmm. my friends. Right. I need to be doing more than me. <laughs> That's like my, my requirement moving into new friendships that I didn't set in the past. Mm -hmm. I was very not intentional in my life in the past that mm -hmm. forward that I'm gonna be intentional in everything down to my friendships. Now you talked about, you know, that boundary on whether or not you want to lose a friend or not. And I feel like my life, my spiritual growth is my line. Once you mm -hmm. hinder me from elevating and I see that, I'm really in, in my awareness of myself and what I'm feeling. And if I feel like me holding your hand or holding on to this friendship is stopping me from reaching new heights. Right. I have to let it go. Yeah. And I usually analyze how somebody's going to love me by how they love themselves. Right. How do you, what do you speak into your life? How do you limit yourself? Are you always here to this and don't like this and can't do this? And you just speak that into your life. You're going to speak that into my life. Mm hmm you may be a great friend, but how you love yourself is how you love me. You can't love me any more than that. Right. So it's, that's the hard part too, leaving people where they at because they yeah. can't understand 
every bit, it's always been this way. It's been this way for years. Now, all of a sudden, it's an issue. Right. It's, you're not going to understand it if you're not growing with me. Exactly. And Survivor's Guilt goes right back into um, last week's episode, Survivor's Guilt. Mm-hmm. Hold on. My list of worth. Oh, okay. I put my list of worthwhile. And you was talking about certain friendships that you will want to have, you know, within, you know, you want your friends to grow with you. Mm-hmm. And I feel like my list of worthwhile is my family. Mm. And I don't have no space outside of that. Okay. Um, like a parent. Sometimes we outgrow our, our, our parents, um, mm-hmm. a sibling. Those are my list of worthwhile. Those are the people that I will want to grow with. My cousins, even some cousins can, can be toxic, but that will be my, okay, let me separate myself from my cousins from now, but let them know that I'm still here, you right. know, still willing to do the work. I still want to see them elevate and evolve, but outside of my family there's not my list of worthwhile friends is very small Mm -hmm. I put it in one hand Mm -hmm. well that's kind of that's just almost about how many friends I got period so so when I say friends Mm -hmm. like that's one thing about me is I learned over the years like there's a lot of people who know me there's a lot of people I know that I give good energy to that give good energy to me but they're not my friends. You know what I mean? So I definitely get what you say, what you say. So when I say my friends, I'm meaning like my core people, the people who, who like are damn near could be family members of mine. These are the ones, these are the ones because I've realized the way that the wind sways with people who are not in your core, like in your core and feel that way about you too. Mm -hmm. Um, because if it feel if they feel like family, I can I can work with that. Yeah. If it's a mutual feeling of that, because there's some people you know it's like you don't consider you wouldn't look at me as family. You are not my friend. Yeah. My friends have known me um, through a lot. Through a lot, my friends have grown with me through a lot and in their own lives and come brought things back and we might have separated and came back. But these are the ones where I, that I know are the for sure ones. Um, but that's a that's a thing I'm gonna meditate on is worthwhile, the worthwhile people, the worthwhile friends in your life. I think mm-hmm. that's good to be intentional with too. Like sit down and really write a list of who's worth holding on mm-hmm. to. In your right. Process. I don't have that list, so I'm gonna write it today. Mm-hmm. For those of you listening, um, do you have some good friends that you need to let go of and you had to watch this to realize that? Um, how have good friends prevent you from growing? Please comment down below. Thank you for listening. This is Conversations with Cousin Carly, episode six. <laughs>